Hello and welcome to the Mountain Heritage Center's virtual program series. I'm Pam Meister, director of the Mountain Heritage Center, and I'm so glad you can join us for one of several online exhibits and programs that we've planned for spring 2021 with the goal of engaging our audiences virtually while we can't provide physical access. Today's program is a virtual tour of an art exhibit titled Ann Miller Woodford, the Artist as Storyteller. In a series of four short episodes, Ms. Woodford will discuss her life and work responding to questions posed by the Mountain Heritage Center's virtual programs team, composed of three WCU students, our team coordinator, Sarah Stanley, and interns, Kyra Waite and John Farney. Ann Miller Woodford, the artist as storyteller, is supported by the North Carolina Arts Council, a division of the Department of Natural and Cultural Resources. And I'd like to give a special thank you to the Jackson County Arts Council's Grassroots Grants Program for their ongoing support of the Mountain Heritage Center's arts activities. Ann Miller Woodford is well known for her paintings that often depict fond memories of family and home in the Appalachian Mountains. In this episode, we will showcase some of those paintings that help keep her memories of home alive. Like most in Appalachia, Ann's family did not have much in the way of material things, but they had plenty of love and determination to cherish each other. Ann holds love particularly for her grandpa Cleve, who faced many adversities in his life but still managed to pour kindness and love into his community. Her grandpa often said, Anne can do anything, and his legacy not only lives in her mind and her paintings, but in the community that he founded that his cousin William Bowens called Happy Top. Grandpa was so special to us. He was the most loving human being that you would ever know even though he had come from that terrible ethnic cleansing down in Georgia. He was caring for us and we loved to see him come. So he's sitting there in a chair and I had to have that painting of him. It's because of her grandpa's bravery that Anne's family ended up in the mountains. Her painting, Grandpa with Sausage Mill, shows the patriarch with a mill in his hand ready to grind the meat for grandma to fry and can so they could continue the hog farming tradition that provided for his loved ones. Grandpa and grandma lived on a house um, on the hill above us, that house that was the first house um, built in the Happy Top community in Andrews. Grandpa would walk down and sit and talk with us very often. He had butchered a, a hog and he needed to make sausage. His sausage mill was dull, so he came down and borrowed daddy's. So that's why he has the sausage mill on his lap. That is a part of the culture that we had. And that was every year there would be one or two hogs butchered. The sausage would be made. The cracklings would be made from the fat. and. Every, everybody, even they canned sausage. Grandma always canned sausage. And that's something my mother didn't do. But by this time in life, she, was, she had a freezer. So she would freeze the sausage. Superstitions, often called old wives' tales in the South, are taken very seriously in Appalachian culture. The same is true in Anne's family, but not so much for her father. He dared to defy some of these traditions, planting his crops when he wanted to and challenging a popular superstition about black cats for the sake of his beloved pet. Anne captured this moment in her painting, Cat Take Ye Breath. That little cat, as I said, Mama was really great at naming animals. So she named that little fella Bongo. Bongo was really, really sweet. And Daddy always loved cats. So that one was crawling up on Daddy and cats really love to get in your face. I don't know if you have a cat or not now, but uh, they love to be close to your face. And the, the old superstition was that they would take your breath away. So that one is cat take your breath because if you look at the face of Daddy, he's like, wait a minute, don't get too close to my face now. I love you, but don't, don't, don't move too close. <laughs> Intimidating as superstitions may seem, ultimately, their power is up to one's interpretation. Similarly, many of Anne's paintings can be interpreted differently depending on the viewer. The Spectres is one such painting. So this kind of represents the spirits, the stories. It's almost the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Sometimes it goes back to Shakespearean stories. It can look, for some people, they might think it's witches. 
but it just represents the way life is so fleeting because if you look at the first the one in the front and see where that person is standing you can see just how easily they could slip away from life afternoon delight is another painting that captures the spirit of embracing life and making the most of what you have this painting depicts two women from Anne's community who worked hard to provide for their families. I went to visit them, took a bunch of photos of them, and put together this painting called Afternoon Delight. And on the side, the brooms are there. People use brooms, and if it was a left-handed broom or right-handed broom or whatever, the broom belonged to a particular person. They had to, they use their, their own broom sometimes, but that rec that represents the domestic work that these ladies did, but they could laugh, we could have such good fun, and we did. Going to church was a large part of Anne's life, and she has many wonderful memories of the people and experiences within her church. In her painting, The Prodigal, Anne remarks on coming back home to her church after being gone for a while with her career. I grew up in the church. Um, when I was a child, we had church sometimes like all day. You'd go in the morning for Sunday school and then church service till one or two, stop and eat and go back uh, for the afternoon and the evening. And uh, so I know the story of the prodigal, that story of the prodigal son, and it has to do, you see the pig there. So that reminds those people who know the story of the prodigal in the Bible that can remind them of that. The prodigal is kind of like for me somewhat, it's unfortunate, but when I first came back home, I had to work my way back into the church. I was almost like a prodigal. <laughs> You know, I had been away and it was like they thought, now she's come back and she's Miss It. <laughs> a great example of how Anne can combine family stories with her own inspiration is her painting titled Foggy Morning and Hanging Dog Off the Unicoi Turnpike. One day, my dad and I were driving down the Joe Brown Highway because daddy loved to ride. He just loved to go for rides and tell the stories of where he had been, where he had worked to butcher hogs and build things. And, and we were driving down there and I saw these trees in the, the water that was behind there. And I, I have to take pictures of that. So I took a bunch of photos and this painting is inspired by that ride with my dad. Anne takes pride in supporting her community, especially the fellow artist within it. In her painting titled Still Life with Blaylock Bowl, she highlights the work of a local potter. Stephen Blaylock was a fantastic potter and his works are collected by people here in the community. And I own that bowl. Um, for a very little while, I lived in a house in Valleytown, which was a place where black people lived when my dad was growing up, um, but after a while it became the elite community of Andrews. A lady asked me to stay in a house up there and take care of her mother's home. And so I was up there and it was winter time and I decided to put that together near the hearth. And that's how that painting came about because I took that bowl with me from my place where I lived into that place I was staying for a while. In the next two episodes, we will explore how Anne incorporates social commentary within her work, as well as capturing Afrolatian culture through portraits of people.